So I figured since I had two trailers and they are both dimensionally the same and they have the same rating per se, <clears throat> I would go over why one cost considerably more than the other. So this back trailer is my 2015 PJ. Uh, basically 84 inches wide, 18 feet long. Um, it is rated at 9,990 pounds. Um, it's got Dexter uh, Easy Lube axles on it, and it's got a five inch frame. Um, this trailer, when I bought it in 2015, best deal, I actually custom uh, ordered this trailer, and this trailer came in right at $4,000. So that was in 2015, so it was five, well, almost six years ago now, because I bought it in May of 2015. Meanwhile, this trailer right here is a 2020. It is Triple Crown, and keep in mind, I'm not necessarily picking on any particular trailer manufacturer in this video. I am just merely going over uh, some small differences that will make a large difference in price. And most of the time when people are buying trailers, they're interested in the price, and a lot of times they're willing to give up some specs for price. So this trailer is <clears throat> uh, also, uh, basically 84 inches wide, seven feet wide, and 18 feet long. It does have the two foot dovetail on the back, beaver tail, whatever you wanna call it, ramp. Um, it does, instead of uh, slide in ramps, this one does have foldable ramps. They are on the front of the trailer right now uh, from a trip that I just brought it, brought it up here. Um, the reason I ended up with this trailer is, yes, it is rated at 10,000 uh, pounds. It does have two uh, 5,200 pound axles on it. Um, but this trailer was after tax tag title out the door in 2020, December of 2020, $500 cheaper than that one. Now, keep in mind that I've priced out the direct replacement of that one and it's right at $4,800 or $5,000 if I was going to go buy it today. So why is this trailer, even though it's dimensionally the same, and it is the same rating, why is it so much cheaper than that trailer? Aside from the brand. Now, I can tell you that PJ trailers are really nice trailers, I like them. Uh, I will probably buy another PJ here in the next 12 months. It'll probably be a 24 foot deck over to replace that one right there. Now, I am selling this one, and so I told you um, that I think I've got about $3,500 plus tax in it. Uh, when, with the, when with that includes a spare tire, and uh, why is it so? Why is it a thousand, fifteen thousand to fifteen hundred bucks cheaper uh, than the the very similar trailer back there? Let's start off with the tires. If you look at them, these are smaller tires than uh, these tires. Obviously, bigger tires are going to uh, perform a little bit better. Uh, I can't remember all the dimensions on the tires. I could spout off a bunch of numbers, but they'd probably be wrong. Um, these are a little bit better tires. Um, these are, uh, I can't remember who they are. I think they're providers. I've had really good luck with these tires. Uh, this trailer has uh, well over 20 to, I, I, would, I would guess right now it's probably getting close to 25,000 miles on it. Uh, behind my truck and meanwhile this trailer has 1600 miles on it coming from Florida to South Dakota uh, So where can you save a lot of money in a trailer? Um, the big thing is Just wait. Uh, I don't know the exact weight of this trailer uh, Quite yet because I don't have the title in my hand for it and I have not run it across the scale But I can tell you that, that one right there weighs 2700 pounds and my guess is this one's about five or six hundred pounds short of that. Uh, I think this weighs 2,000 to 2,100 based on uh, just some rough math that I've done and overall weight of uh, what I'm carrying and stuff like that. Um, so you're sacrificing some steel when you go a little bit cheaper. And the first way they do that is if you look on this trailer right here, the stringers across the trailer are every 16 inches. Right there to right there, 16 inches. Meanwhile, on this one, the stringers are like every three feet. So you've got one here, and you got one here, you've got one here, and you got one more somewhere up in here. Uh, maybe Actually, maybe not, because you got the support right there. You got the A-frame. So the stringers are farther apart. Not necessarily a bad deal if they use stronger metal or uh, stronger parts for the stringers uh, at the same time it has to do with the wiring if you look at this trailer right here this trailer just has 
you know, wrapped, you know, poly wrapped wiring, not, not a big deal. If, um, and this would be very, this right here is very common in the southern states where you don't have to deal with snow and ice. And you can find it on trailers in the Midwest and uh, cold in the Northeast, colder states. I've seen it many, many times. But the thing about it is if you're towing this thing in snow and ice, that will get full of snow and ice and it will cause problems. Meanwhile, this trailer back here has a cold weather rated cord. So it has an entire cord that is cold weather rated. Um, now over time, I actually need to replace it because now this thing's five years old, it's not very good in the cold anymore. But it's a nice, easy replacement. The whole cord is all in one. Um, no problem whatsoever right there in terms of ice, things along those lines. Now it comes down to the little bitty details. Uh, stake pockets. This has stake pockets all the way down the side and a rub rail. This trailer right here has three pockets on each side. One, two, three. That's it. Now, that might be fine if you're you know, hauling a, a subcompact utility tractor or a skid steer, but if you wanna put multiple things on here, if you wanna carry an awkward load like the Bridgeport Mill that's sitting on this one, the three stake pockets can be somewhat of a pain. I would have really liked a rub rail and stake pockets, but that added about 500 bucks to the cost. Um, and it, I would have had to special order it because a lot of people don't wanna pay for things like this, rub rails and stake pockets, on a smaller, cheaper trailer. Uh, additionally, uh, and I would say one of the benefits of this trailer is it has the foldable ramps on it. So you leave the ramps on the back, you just fold them down. This trailer actually, because when I purchased it, I actually ordered it like this. The salesman thought I was absolutely crazy. And you can see once again, it doesn't have a rub rail back here, but it's got three stake pockets. Um, I actually ordered the hideaway ramps instead of the foldable ramps. And that is because I had to fit this trailer in a very specific space. Um, and so I could not afford the height of foldable ramps on there. Now my next trailer will have foldable ramps. However, they will not be ramps that stick up in the air. They will actually be fold flat ramps or what PJ calls monster ramps. And um, that way you can use the full 24 feet or however many, however long of the trailer. Um, so overall, there's lots of itty bitty little details that may mean that trailers cost a little bit less. Uh, and so that's just something you should really be aware of when you're buying a trailer. Um, you know, be aware of, okay, why is this one cost so much less or even a little bit less? You know, what's, are there fewer welds? Are, um, did they, you know, did they reduce the number of stringers? Uh, did they uh, change the design of the A-frame? I mean, overall, if you look at the amount of steel in this thing, um, and I haven't put a caliper on it or anything, but you know, I mean, that's that's a lot of steel. I mean, when you compare the A-frame right there when it joins the trailer frame, um, I mean, that's, you know, a good, I don't have a tape measure with me, but that's probably a good 10 inches. Meanwhile, you come look at the PJ, there doesn't appear to be nearly as much steel on the PJ. But what happens is when you start looking at the thickness of this C-channel right here, the thickness on, and like I said, I haven't put a caliper on it, but the thickness of the C-channel on this PJ is actually uh, a little bit thicker than the C-channel on this trailer right here. So um, just very, very minute differences um, that, that make, a, uh, it ultimately, you know, if you're just in it for, for pulling a machine once in a while, um, you know, you don't, you just don't have really anything that you need to, to really pull all the time. This trailer's right here is perfectly fine. There's, in, if I thought there was anything wrong with this trailer, I would not have bought it. I would have just gone ahead and sucked it up and, and bought a, uh, a little bit more expensive trailer, much like the PJ here. And I may have even done a replacement for the PJ, but I just, I wasn't in the position necessarily to buy the, the trailer that I want. And I don't even think they would have it. I'll probably have to end up custom ordering it. But um, those are some things that you look at to think about uh, when it comes to buying a trailer that I think are fairly important. Um, it's always a devil is in the little itty bitty details. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm trying not to rag on this trailer too much. And one of the things I do like about this trailer is the jack. Um, it's a drop leg jack. Uh, it's actually really, really nice. I really like it. Um, you know, there's, there's, uh, I really like that jack. Um, but then you've got, you know, these hitches right here are an absolute pain uh, in colder weather. 
uh, right here, which I mean, like I said, I bought it in Florida, so it's perfectly fine in Florida. But if we look at the hitch on the PJ back here, it's a little bit easier to deal with. It slides out to the side. You don't get snow and ice and everything caught in it. Um, you know, it's a really nice hitch. It's a little bit higher rated as well. So, um, like I said, devil's always in the details. Um, you know, you just have to kind of shop around and, you know, pay attention to little things. Don't just pay attention to price when it comes to trailers. Uh, and I think these two trailers are a very, very good indication of you have very similarly sized machines or trailers and they are very different in cost. You know, so like just to reiterate, this one right here is $1,500 cheaper than this one right here, brand new. So um, if you have questions, comments, leave them below. I'm, I try not to get too far off of what I normally talk about um, because when it comes to trailers, everybody's got an opinion and everybody, you know, thinks a particular brand is the best in the world. Um, you know, I've had, I've had really good luck with my PJ here and I probably buy another PJ. Um, my, meanwhile, my fam a couple of my family members have had a bunch of triple crowns and no problems whatsoever. Uh, they, they are a little bit cheaper trailer, but they're cheaper because for a reason. So um, if you have any questions, comments, leave them below and thanks for watching.